Noli here and welcome to the extras. It's day three of the Gage Sniper Pack reveal, the day of release. I am excited it should be out any minute now. Let's just go through what we get today. And by the way, there is a lot to get through. It's launch day and it's time to take a look at what's in the final boxes. Gage has some very interesting things lined up, some very useful mods for the sniper rifles, and a set of masks. I have to say, what is it with Gage and masks? Those designs are not normal. The guy obviously has a thing for creepy animals. So looking at the sniper mods, I'm not going to go these, through these things one by one, I'm just going to briefly touch on them and I'm not going to fully talk about the um, descriptions. You guys can read that yourselves if you're interested. But here we have the short dot. I will show you the pictures as always. Clearly it's your standard, more ACOG type scope you're going to be using on, I imagine your faster fire rate rifles. Hip fire looks like this and I have a feeling that hip fire might be direct. I don't imagine there will be deviation so maybe leet. 360xx no scopes montage coming out any minute. Um, next up we have the Thea. It's as badass as it gets and it really is. This comes with two awesome features. The range finder which will accurately measure distances up to 200 meters. I doubt there will be bullet drop however so a little bit of the extra explanation is this is probably just a show weapon to tell your friends how far your highest kill has been. The auto tagger on the other hand is a little more important. It will automatically tag enemies in stealth. It will also auto tag specials uh, when the alarms go off. So th this is awesome. Um, it, it likely won't do it through walls so if you're going to want to go for the warbang shots with the suppressed snipers on stealth you're probably going to need teammates to help you. Pretty funny. Don't ask how it works. It's super complex and has to do with image recognition or body heat or something. And then we have the 45 degree iron sights which we saw in all the trailer footage. Basically when you press Q which is your gadget key you swap your weapon from its normal scope to these iron sights allowing you to use the rifle at close range as a scopeless rifle. Um, this, Because of this I originally thought maybe some of these are going to be battle rifles and not all bolt action but I think for balance's sake it's probably better that they've done it that way. Now this part's quite interesting. You unlock the sniper pack content. So similar to the mod courier job, you do have to earn them. There are lots of achievements coming with this and most of these achievements seem to be associated with one of these. For example, kill three enemies with one bullet using any sniper rifle. This will be relatively easy, I imagine, on some of the harder difficulties, but remember you have to kill the enemy, is not just hit. So hopefully with the most powerful sniper we'll be able to do this. Another interesting one kill for more, for more enemies through a wall using the R93. You can seemingly do this outside of stealth, so this one shouldn't be too hard. And then kill five more enemies while ziplining using any sniper rifle. Yes, you can fire secondaries and primaries while on the zipline, while traversing the zipline. The zipline's pretty awesome, and there's a lot to talk about involving that in a minute. Um, as far as this one is going to work. Uh, difficulty wise it's probably going to be quite hard. I assume you won't be able to aim down sights when shooting down the zip line, and I also assume you're not going to spend too much time there. But there is something we'll read later that sounds a little different to that. So maybe a difficult achievement but definitely one that should be fun trying to get. Next up we have the assets. We have vantage points and we have zip lines. Let's talk about the zip lines first. They are quite interesting and a little note about DLC owners. So zip lines work the way you imagine they do, they go from one place to another, often giving access from the sniper vantage point to a place of contention. However, just be careful during assaults, you are a sitting duck if someone spots you. You can carry a bag over with you and of course shoot your weapons. What does this mean? Well, likely it means that you will take more damage on the zip line or you will in a couple of bullets fall off and most likely die to the falling damage. So. Definitely a con to the pros of using the zip lines. Now, vantage points are extremely interesting and I'm excited about them. I won't go through every single one of these, I'll just pick out some of my favourites. So, first of all, we have my absolute favourite. There's something beautiful about this screenshot and I cannot wait to be up there. We have the jewellery store and Ukrainian job. The actual function of this may be limited given that Ukrainian job and jewellery store tend to be the easier missions in the game. Um, however, it does overlook every single exit and ever since I played Jury Store for the first time I wondered why we didn't have multi-layered functioning. Finally that's in, I cannot wait to try it out. It's definitely going to make certain death wish missions more manageable. 
or so we hope. Exactly how we're going to be able to, or how target range is going to work for us up in our vantage points, I'm not sure. Don't forget, on Death Wish, enemies are laser accurate. And because I doubt enemies can climb up here themselves, or if they can, we're going to see some elaborate acrobatics. Um, you're probably, if you get spotted, going to be in an awful lot of trouble up here. Showing you my second favourite again, just as thanks to positioning, we have the jewelry. Not sorry, not the jewelry store. The um, bank heist. Of course, this is another awesome um, vantage point, looking over again almost all the exits. And I can imagine if your exit is over in this direction, zip landing across to the roof, running across the glass on the roof, jumping over and diving into the van. Seems awesome and I definitely can't wait to see how it works. Finally, uh, the others are pretty awesome but I don't really have time to go through them right now if I want this to be a relatively normal length video. We have the Framing Frame Day 3 which we saw in the trailer. This is a stealth one by the looks of things. We get your silent sniper over here, given the shooting of glass apparently doesn't make a lot of noise, definitely gonna make taking out this mission stealth a little easier. It's also likely going to work well during assaults. Again, that's based exactly how the aggro range is for people in the vantage points. Remember, we don't want everyone diving into the vantage points. You won't be able to complete objectives there, so use them with your discretion. Anyone can unlock a vantage point if the host owns the DLC. DLC owners can always buy it, even if the host doesn't own it. Basically, again, we're getting an update no matter how you look at it. So even if you're not interested in paying the $4.99 Four dollars ninety nine for this uh, DLC. There will be some awesome features that you can enjoy, assuming hosts have it, um, or there's someone else in your party willing and able to pay for the assets. Next up, we have the masks, and this is definitely a feature that I'm interested in, given my uh, history with masks. I'm going to struggle with these names, by the way. I'm going to do my very best, um, but let's let's see what I can do. I will read this part. Well, speaking for myself, I think with this collection, Gage has outdone himself in the creepy stakes. I guess he wanted something that reflects the nature of snipers, or maybe it's the poisonous stinger thing, or the fact that they eat their prey. Uh, let's hear what Gage has to say. So first of all, we have the Acilidae. I believe I've said that right. It is the robber fly. Of course, these are all based off insects. Uh, arachnophobia. Incoming. Um... <laughs> It's an awesome looking mask, exactly how these things are going to customise, I'm very interested in. I want to see how these textured eyes are going to look with certain materials. Up next we have the Sophrodomantis, Sophrodomantis, I'm trying, okay? <laughs> um, I'm sure you guys will correct me. The Mantis, similar to the fly, is awesome, again, beautiful textures. Textures are what's most important in mask design, by the way. Uh, possibly second to the actual look itself. Next up we have the Vespula, I can actually say that, Vespa in Latin is Wasp, and that's where we're getting this mask name from. Again, another awesome mask, I love antennas, I love I love this mouth, I can't wait to customise them now. Now, then we have the Trilantula, tr <laughs> the easiest one to say, and I got it wrong, the Tarantula. Again, those with arachnophobia look away now. Another awesome looking mask, not sure about the face, it's mouth area I should say, pretty disgusting, but I uh, can't wait to get my hands on it and customise it. Materials and patterns are also awesome, bug themed again, uh, this is my personal favourite material, look out and see how I use it in my customised bug masks later on. This one is also awesome for its texture. Now it wouldn't be a gauge pack without achievements of course, yet as they seem to say earlier, some of these achievements relate with um, the unlocking of certain attachments and masks. By the way, I'm going to read this. As usual, four patterns, four materials, differences, they don't drop like regular loot. You unlock them together with the masks. Each of the four sniper pack masks you unlock will award you a material and a pattern. So it works a little bit like the uh, infamy rewards. So I'm not going to go through these achievements, otherwise again I'll be here all day. As always, great puns in the names, great difficulty in the uh, challenges themselves I imagine. And finally getting down to the AK, the golden AK for the community. Maybe you were cable tied or 
or away with your parents doing something boring, but we just passed 500,000. Or oh, you didn't watch my uh, video. Community members in the Payday 2 official group on Steam. That, dear heisters, is, co a co is cause for celebration. These final two achievements are hooked together with that event. Go and check out the Overkill Software 500k website page, which I have in a recent video linked, and then you'll see exactly what they are. Better still, go watch my video for it. Um, so we got one achievement, the man with the golden gun, kill six skulldozers using only the golden AK-762 uh, rifle. That means you're probably going to have to be playing on your own, and skulldozers on your own is a terrifying thing. Build me an army worthy of crime.net. Equip the golden AK-762 rifle, celebrating 500,000 heisters in the official community group. You can now unlock unlock the golden AK-762 rifle by simply joining the Payday 2 official group on Steam. Of course there are far more than 500,000 natural heisters, but the ones in the group are the ones that we call heisters, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so remember those of you who have the computer, the PC version, the Steam copy of this game, that's how you get the golden AK. Again, as far as other updates for console, I do, by the way, have the Xbox version of Payday. I, I feel you. I really do. I'm very sorry that we're not seeing too much for Xbox, but I am sure I'm keeping up spirits, even if you guys aren't. I, uh, I really hope they do something about it ASAP. But in itself, this update is awesome for those of you who have the PC version. Um, I'm also going to be giving away a Payday 2 copy. I'm going to be giving something else away for the week of sin, but eventually I, I did buy another PC copy in the last sale, so one of you lucky guys who may be struggling with the uh, the console blues as I call them will be able to win one in the upcoming days, so stay tuned for that. Enjoy the Gage Sniper pack when it's finally released on Steam, I know I will, and I'll see you guys on the heist. Thanks a lot for watching.